because of the importance of CO pay, it is really crucial for us to understand how CO pay is set. And this is where our research project comes in. The level and the design of CO pay are incredibly important decisions for any company. Now, CO pay is obviously crucial in attracting, retaining and motivating a CEO. But CO pay also affects the company more broadly. Excessive CO pay can demotivate employees or it can lead to a backlash from customers or other outside groups. More broadly, CO pay across the economy affects how the public perceives capitalism and especially the fairness or unfairness of capitalism. I've been conducting research on executive and CEO pay for a very long time. And one of the things that's really holding us back is we never really get to talk to the people actually making the decisions about CEO pay in the real world. And this is exactly the gap we're trying to fill with this project. Together with Alex Edmonds and Tom Gosling from London Business School, we conducted a practitioner survey of more than 200 directors of publicly traded UK companies and more than 150 representatives of institutional investors in UK equities. Now, directors obviously set and approve the actual pay contract, but institutional shareholders do get to vote on those contracts. And it's really the interaction of the two that determines CEO pay we asked essentially the same questions to two different groups, which allows us to assess whether the two are aligned with each other or whether they disagree. The survey responses revealed a whole host of really interesting results that really challenge our thinking about CEO pay. The first question of the survey asked respondents to rank the importance of three goals in setting CEO pay. Number one, attracting and retaining the right CEO. Number two, motivating the CEO. And number three, minimizing the level of CEO pay. And there was really broad agreement between directors and shareholders that minimizing the level of CEO pay is least important. And that's really interesting. And I believe it's a partial answer for why levels of CEO pay are so high, because none of the really important players in the pay setting process view high pay levels as a first order problem. Now, coming to the disagreement, most directors believe that attracting and retaining the right CEO is the most important goal in setting CEO pay. Shareholders, on the other hand, believe that motivating the CEO is more important. Now, this disagreement reflects a theme that recurs throughout the entire survey. Investors generally seem to be much more focused on motivating and incentivizing the CEO. Directors, on the other hand, worry much more about labor market pressures, the market for managerial talent, and about the difficulty of finding, retaining, and in many ways, keeping happy that one good CEO they need to run the company. The second really interesting result of the survey was that directors feel incredibly constrained when setting CEO pay by the need to avoid controversy with various parties, such as employees, customers, and proxy advisors. Two thirds of directors admit directly that they are willing to sacrifice shareholder value to avoid controversy on CEO pay. So they're not simply setting CEO pay to maximize shareholder value, but they're setting CEO pay while probably trying to maximize shareholder value, but very much subject to the constraint of not getting into trouble with anybody out there. And most surprisingly, the toughest constraint they're reporting is the need to obtain shareholder approval. And that's a bit baffling for us because, well, if boards set CEO pay to maximize shareholder value, then shareholder approval should be automatic. However, directors really do not believe that. And they are strongly convinced that shareholder guidelines and shareholder interference in the CEO pay setting process undermines shareholder value. And directors really express a lot of frustration in both the free text field in our survey and in post-survey interviews about institutional shareholders not properly understanding or not appreciating the difficulty of finding, retaining and motivating CEOs. Thirdly, directors are much more concerned with the psychology of CEOs than certainly our academic models have previously acknowledged. So directors worry enormously about CEOs viewing their pay packages as fair, with the rewards they're receiving for good performance as fair, and directors are incredibly worried about undermining the CEO's intrinsic motivation by delivering something that the CEO would view as unfair. So I believe our results should really help practitioners by highlighting these various differences in views about CO pay and how optimal CO pay should be set.
and I believe there would be genuine benefit to increase engagement of companies with their shareholders to have much more open discussions about these issues and ultimately trying to resolve them and coming to some agreement for what optimal CO pay should look like.